2016 17 data will be um, unembargoed, and you will be able to view the trend from last year to this year, and they'll add it to this for a public setting. But right now, we can't take a look at it. I'm not focusing that well. Which, yep. which line is the trend? Okay, so uh, 2011, 12, 2012, 13, and 13, 14, okay. you'll see there's kind of a gap. Those are the old MEEP assessments we used to take. And then the bar to the right, that's the new end step from 14, 15 to 15, 16, okay? So we're looking at ELA. Can we dim the lights? Maybe that would help. There we go. Movie theater stop. Is that okay for you? Yeah. So from 14 to 15, your students increase in partially proficient. And from let's see, 14 to 15, there was a slight decrease in not proficient, which is actually what you want to see, okay? Um, but remember, these are not the same students, and that's where a lot of people get confused. This is trend data for a grade level assessment. So this is fourth grade to fourth grade. Different students, same content area. Okay. But this is showing progress. This is showing student progress. Your, your non proficient if you look at the very top, the bright red, you're not proficient. The raw score data is below. So is there a scale of how not
But I want to show you some positive data. Because NWA, the benchmarking test that, this, that the district uses, is showing some very positive pieces in regards to student growth. So here's a chart. So this is a 12-month chart. So this is from winter of last year to winter of this year. Okay. Same students. <coughs> what NWA does is it removes any child that didn't take the same the test. So these are the same child as students. And what they do is they do a norm reference. So if you see those diamonds, that's the target that we want to see our, our students growing at. What they do is they take all of the schools in the country, all the kids in that grade level, and they norm reference it, and they average out, okay, if a kid tested here in the fall in the winter, this is where we want them to be in the following winter. As you can see, and I can let Carol kind of talk a little bit about this if she wants, the majority of your grade levels are hitting where they need to hit in regards to growth. This only shows the second and fourth grade actually achieving the target. As long as they hit the diamond, they're considered achieving the target. They're almost there with the number of, of your courses. When I look at individual students as well. Okay. Because, and I can explain this Here's the six month. This is a little bit nicer. So this is this year, okay? This is from this fall to this winter. About a six month time period, okay? So they're making growth. They're making growth based on where they should be. Now, is, is that first column? That first column is kindergarten. So zero, zero is kindergarten. So that first same is zero. No, they made growth. They just didn't make what the what the national average of growth rate should be for this group. And, and so, how would we explain that? Why? We would have to dig deeper into curriculum, individualized assessment scores, um, where the students coming from. Because here's the thing about kindergarten: they're coming from all sorts of different preschool programs, home, you know, child care providers. There's a lot of different backgrounds when they come to kindergarten. So this is quite normal when you see that. Okay, because that first six months of kindergarten is a huge adjustment too. Yes. They're experiencing a lot of changes in regards to procedures and that type of thing going on. I know preschool does make a big difference. Yep. Yep. And some kids unfortunately have no pre-K, right. head start, early learning. They just jump right into kindergarten. So it certainly yes. appears the first grade is maybe up. Yes. They are. Would, the, would this be based on a student having gone to preschool or not? I don't know. I would have to dig into each individual student for the district. It would kind of matter if they were looking at some goals that would have been used in preschool for, to judge this. They're, they're testing the students to the standard whether they have pre attended preschool or not. Correct. So, that, like I said, that's my point. Okay. They don't it, differentiate. It would be very interesting to look at each child and see who went to what program and break it down. Yep. That's pretty good. You can make it look good. Yep. If that was something we know it makes a difference. So, on that chart, the only grade that did not make any growth is the 11th grade going it's below. And as you can see, there's no diamond on the 11th and 12th grade, and that's intentional by NWEA. They consider those capstone years. Um, and so they don't put a, a growth norm reference on those two grades. So that's a positive thing. Now you're probably wondering, if we're making this much growth, why is our student achievement or proficiency coming out the way that it is? The growth is based upon the students and their abilities. So when they come in, we're testing them, and they're making a ton of growth. They just Unfortunately, because of some of the deficits going on when they come in, as you can see by kindergarten, we have to make a lot of growth here in order to meet, meet that benchmark that the state has set. So while they're making growth, we want to continue to see them surpass that old diamond. They need to surpass that old diamond. Are these growth departments based on this by district based on student performance of previous students? I, I, I guess my question is, are those nationalized? 
national standard, or are those based on district performance? The gold diamond is based on national. Here's, here, here's reading for six months. So from this fall to this winter, same population of students. So these are the exact same students testing from fall to winter. Carol, is there anything you want to mention about this chart? So in, in uh, reading, the grades that experienced the most chart, most growth, as you can see, was first grade, um, followed by fourth grade. There, those, those, those are real close. Well, actually, first and fourth experienced the most growth, um, growth, and then followed by third and fifth. And then the least growth would be ninth grade, and of course, 12th. What happened there? In 12th grade? Yeah, that was it. Yeah, question. Going backwards, right? My, my prediction, and John, correct me if I'm wrong on this, but my experience is, is with 12th graders, um, when you give them a test, they may not take it seriously. seriously. I don't want to use it as an excuse, but that's the only thing I could think of when I saw that 12th grade data. I don't know what your experience was with the uh, test. Though. I think that's a very good answer. I'm just not going to share it here. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah, I'm motivated to take the test seriously. That's a trend. That sometimes happens with 12th graders. They're, they're checked out, but it just depends. Um, I can't speak to why the results turned out that way. But that would suggest that they made negative progress, correct? Yes. Yep. They're, they're not they're not going the way they should. They they regress rather than progress, correct? Right? Unless we digress. If if I saw that, I would dig deeper. I see that as an anomaly. Now who's, who is who This is the first time that RIC has had access to the data. Carol was kind enough to share that access with me um, so that I could take a look at it. Carol, what is your process for data in the district? Well, our teachers have had minimal training on analyzing the data, but part of the, the uh, uh, PD plan for this year is for the teachers to get a lot more training. And then the, part of what they do in PLCs is to look at this data, dig deeper. I mean, it makes no sense to just take the test and not do anything with the, uh, with the data. And so they'll be digging deeper, looking at the data, and then making adjustments. They can individualize student performance on the end step. So they can individualize the... On the NWEA? Yeah. Yes. I'm yes. oh, sorry, NWEA. Yes. yes. Okay. I, I think uh, this, just understanding this really the first time that it will be uh, Maybe good practice uh, to have a specific person at least analyze this and put like a, a, a red flag or something on something like you said with the anomaly that just sticks out as being really something we need to look into immediately mm -hmm. in the process. I, I think that would. So this is winter to winter for reading. So last winter to this winter. Um, I put the six months versus the 365 day one up there as a reference for you because I'm finding more and more districts are more interested in the year to year. So we want to know winter from winter, fall to fall, how our kids are progressing um, because of the summer regression we sometimes see. They want their curious about that. That's really important to them. So we always make sure we take a look at that. Um, so here it is in regards to 12 months for reading.
look like they're doing pretty good, but ninth graders always seem to not do as well. That's a big transition for students. That's part of it. Very similar to here. Yeah, you see yeah. across the board, across the nation. Yes. And it's a problem. So a couple of things, um, just in regards to the presentation today, is making sure that proficiency in student achievement is that bar that's set by someone, by some company, in regards to all children have to meet this, where student growth really is our kids growing. It may not be fast enough, we may want to speed it up, we want to figure out how they're growing, but you can see where they are growing. Anywhere there's a blue bar, they are growing. It's just a matter of what rate they are growing, and are they meeting where they need to be, where are they exceeding it. Because your proficiencies may not be necessarily where you want them to be, you really need to focus on getting them to surpass that gold diamond because they need to grow a little bit faster. And it's taking a look at what can we do to help you get there. A couple things, the ISD is offering NWEA training. So it's really important to understand the numbers in the system once you get the test. And so we're offering a series this year for how to read those reports, how can you use this to make instructional pieces. Mm -hmm. Um, Carol and I also spoke yes. right before the board meeting in regards to PLC support and how we can make sure the teachers are using this data to change their instruction. So there, there are some things that we're looking forward to helping and providing. This data makes a, a lot of difference because I know I'm looking um, for a second home in another community and the realtors to steer you to areas with the schools. There's websites that you yeah, the school data is what people are looking at almost before anything yeah. when they decide where to live. Yeah. I was out with friends and they were discussing it. I don't talk about it, but they sit there and they, they were having chit chat. It was amazing to me how they were comparing each district. So it is amazing. And and, um, yeah. I went to one website that's called Great Schools. Yep, that's they, the primary one. Yeah, and they do a nice mm -hmm. analysis of the achievement. Blueprint Institute this summer. 
Um, everyone left there committed to go full force with all of the systems that we kind of put in place throughout the year. So I'm going to kind of talk about that. So in there, in your folders, you have a graphic of the blueprint that talks about kind of what the blueprint is. You've looked at this before. And where we are is in the little purple bubble, it laying the systems or the foundational work for the blueprint. Now, Carol also gave you that little colorful skyscraper. So um, the MyExcel team has kind of broken things down into um, levels. And we are in the mechanical level at this point. And so in this level or in this phase, the district installs the blueprint and gets all of the systematic visions in place to go forward throughout the school year. So this is where we are. Um, and this is where we have lived for the last year. So I'll talk about some of the things that we have accomplished. So our catalyzing event, that's like the first thing you do um, in the blueprint, is just realizing that we are a district that needs to uh, boost student achievement. Um, under the blueprint, they formed a district network. Um, Pat sits on the district network. Um, we have uh, people from central office. This year we have added some teachers to our uh, blueprint. Vista Becca right. yep. <laughs> is one of our uh, newest members to the district network. He brings a very strong teacher voice and um, we are glad to have him. Um, the district, the first thing they did was have create a problem solving driver, which is how to look at data, how we're going to look at data when we are in groups, in teacher groups, in district groups. And so we developed a protocol that we are pushing out to teachers in September. Uh, at the PLCs, they'll be able to look at data through a different lens and also get strength from Rebecca, our principals get strength from Rebecca, and they've been trained on the collaborative learning cycle on how to look at NWEA, MSTEP, SAT, and make those critical decisions for kids. So that is coming, and teachers will be doing engaged in that work. And with the late start, they will have time to all come together and do that work. And even if they want to meet across the building, they'll have that time so that we can carry that work forward. We also developed a communication protocol, um, and I'm sure Carol will give you the final drafts of all of these documents of how we communicate in-house and outside. This, uh, about three months ago, we even came up with a hierarchy of communication. When you have a problem and you're a parent, who is it with, where do you go? All the way up to the board, so that you don't get calls that haven't been funneled through Carol. And Carol doesn't get calls that haven't been funneled through building principals. Building principals don't get calls that haven't been funneled through teachers first. And so we developed that system, and that's being rolled out to the teachers also in September. We also visioned out our talent management, and that's how we go about retaining or employing talent. So uh, we developed teacher profiles, principal profiles, and superintendent profiles. So when we post for a job, or even within the talent, within the district, people know what is expected of them. So, We've done that work, and that will also be pushed out to the staff in September. Um, instructional infrastructure is our latest task. So we visioned out what we want high-quality, subject-specific instruction to look like in math, science, English language arts, and social studies. Um, we went through at our last meeting Wednesday and kind of vetted those. And we are developing a walkthrough tool, and I'll talk about that, that kind of highlights what we've done. So we are now at the last step of the mechanical level, which is our student support network. How do we take care of our students' non-academic needs? What would that look like in Bridgeport? That might be different in Saginaw Township, that might be different in Saginaw City, but what do we see as what do we need to provide our students with non-academically that can take care of them and boost their academic needs? So that's where we are, um, and we will be finished with visioning that at the end of September, and we'll be out of the mechanical phase, right, Jen? <laughs> <laughs> and we'll be on to some deeper work in the blueprint, so that's where we are. Any questions on that before I tell you what's going on? Okay. 
Okay, so this is what you should see. September 2017 in Bridgeport. All teachers will receive the introduction to the blueprint of three hour professional development on August 28th, their first day back. So all teachers will be steeped in the blueprint. They know about it now, but they like, oh, what is this blueprint thing? Mr. Becker had a chance, he and about six Bridgeport high school teachers to go through a two day institute this summer where they learned about the blueprint. So now they can help us facilitate that learning to the rest of the staff. So that's full staff. And Dr. Brooks, we're doing that first thing on the 28th. On the, yes. Right? Yep. Eight o'clock in the morning on the 28th. Feel free to join. Yeah. Active teachers were involved too, and I just like. Yes. 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 And there were there were some teachers from Atkins Middle and Elementary. No, just the middle school elementary had training. Um, so all teachers will be given the profiles so that they will know what to expect. What does a teacher look like in a turnaround district? What are my goals for the year? Um, a, a, a funny thing, John was at the Leadership Institute, and he said, I'm going to take this, this profile and judge myself on it and see what I need. So John already has his growth markers for this year. He knows what he needs to do to get to that turnaround principle of what he needs to be. He took his own self-assessment, and he took it to heart, and he's, that's, that's his driving force. So, um, all teachers will be given the copies of the new visions of high quality, subject specific instruction. You would have had those today, but we have not put the final staff on them. So um, the DTM is meeting August 16th. They will finalize those, and we want that in your hands so that you can see what those are. Um, what did you say about those? The visions for high quality, subject specific instruction. So, so if, yes. So if you go into a math class anywhere in Bridgeport, these are the things that you should see going on. If you go into a social studies class, these are the things that you should see going on. So that's that's what that was um, our last beat. Um, so all teachers will receive that. All PLCs will be led using the CLC data protocol. So when they start their uh, PLCs up, they have a protocol form that they will fill out as they meet in their groups about the data and their action steps. That's the very most important piece. What are, what are we going to do about it? So we've looked at it, now what are we going to do about it? And so that adds a layer of depth to what they've been looking at. We look at data and we say, oh, okay, we looked at it. Now what are we going to do about it? And let's put some dates to that. So all teachers will be using that. And Dr. Brooks, this is where the two entities overlap and work together. The data that Rebecca just talked about ties into what Dr. Brooks is talking about, then this is the, where the time where we get to analyze and look at that data. Does that make sense? You see how we're all in this together as a team with the two entities. And um, principals will um, conduct daily walkthroughs. Um, Carol has given them a charge of so many walkthroughs per day, looking at instruction one, um, in a data protocol form to know how we're doing on that vision of high quality. And we'll come back to the DTN and say, Okay, so science across the district, how are we doing compared to what our vision statement says science should look like? And then what should we do about it? So it's making those decisions. Um, so principals will be doing daily walkthroughs with those visions. Principals will also engage in monthly conversations with the superintendent around performance management. So the superintendent monthly will know what data points are going on in the school, what data looks like, what, what is the achievement, what are they working on, what are their benchmarks, monthly. So they'll have those conversations monthly with Carol. And um, the district network has committed to just continue the blueprint and continue leading the district um, for student achievement because that's the purpose. When we get all of our systems aligned and we get everything in order, then we should see student achievement sky. So, um, that's my presentation. Any questions? I think that's impressive because if you were going to a business, a corporation, and they had certain goals, I think this is the way they would address it. You know, mm -hmm. and I think that's what we should be doing. I think it's what it gives us. Where are we at at this institute? Where are we at in relation to 
other districts that were that we met last year. How was Bridgeport doing in, in its implementation of the school district? So compared to many of the districts, we are all around the same place. Um, some districts that are high performing are skyrocketing, like the Lincoln Park, like the Hazel Park. Um, we have gone slow to move fast, as Carol says. Um, we visioned out everything, and that's taken us a while to vision those out. But now we can. Once we get through this phase, we can go full force into implementation because that's when you get into when you get to reviewing data, um, looking at it, and making decisions. That's when that motor starts running. And so we have. Um, it says four months for this phase. Um, not one district has done that in four months, but if you put 10, they'll take 20. So you set a mark, and then we work towards that mark. Um, we have set a goal that we will be out of the lobby level, which is the next level, by the end of the school year, I mean, heading into mechanical phase by January, February. That's our mark, that's our target, and we're gonna work hard to get there. <laughs> no, I mean it, it's absolutely we need to we need to push on this. Yeah. And it's it's something the sense of urgency needs to needs to happen with the administrative team. And you guys need to understand, I as high school principal with this, I graded out as a 31%. That's not acceptable. It's not acceptable <laughs> to, to the kids of Bridgeport, to you as a board of education, to the staff. Becca deserves a better principal than this. And that's the truth. I, I just want to add, I'm very excited about the work that we're, we're doing. The conversations that we're having in the DTM, I would dare to say, we probably never had these kind of policy, uh, conversations talking about the gold standards of teaching, what we expect to see in a high quality um, reading class or math class or science class or social studies. We, I don't think we have, we, we meet in this room and there's been times when all of these walls have been full of post-its, big post-its, where we're mapping out what we need to see, what we need, everything down to when we hire people, what are we looking for? We, we have profiles for a blueprint, a turnaround teacher, a turnaround a building leader, a turnaround superintendent. So the goal is, and, and, and we're not there yet, but we're getting there. And, and it really begins with all of these very rich conversations. The goal is making sure everyone in the district, from um, all the staff members and administrators, teachers, and even uh, parents, students, the community, know that we are a blueprint school and that we have systems in place. That's the whole point of the blueprint, putting systems in place, district systems, building routines and that's where we're that's where we're going. I think that's where we misstepped in the path, not getting to where we need to be, both um, academically and financially, really, not having strong district systems in place. And that's what we're doing with the blueprint work. For some of us on the team are a little impatient, thinking, oh we need to move fast, we need to but really, sometimes you really do have to go slow to move fast. I, we're, at the, we're in the mechanical level, which is the bottom, but we're at the top of the mechanical level. And I know, because of all the rich conversations that we have, we're about to, we're about to jettison. I mean, I know we won't get to the top this year, but we're, we are going to move forward very rapidly. Everyone knows, and I, the team is very excited about moving forward. I know John, you can hear it in the voice, he's very excited. Mr. Becca is pretty excited. The other members of the team are pretty excited about moving forward, and we just have to make sure that everyone is on board. Uh, I agree with that, because we're only as strong as our weakest Sure. And uh, if someone is perceived to be a weak link in that chain, you know, we've got to address it. I mean, you just can't sidestep it, and we, that's the nicest thing we can do, is address it to them early up in the game so that they can get on board, because it holds everybody. With all of that said, um, I'm hoping that the board wants to assure that whoever's in this spot, who's, who's at the helm of the district, or in your spot for that matter, that we will continue this work of the blueprint 
making sure that once we get all these systems in place, we keep them in place um, so we will be successful in all aspects of the work that we're trying to do. So I have a resolution, um, and for some reason, if a copy didn't make it to all of your packets, but if you don't mind, you can indulge me, I can read the resolution. Next. It's on the agenda. It's next on the agenda. Okay, why don't we finish with Dr. Brooks and then we can do that. I didn't know if you were done. Yes. Do you have any questions? Yes. She does a great job facilitating. Thank you. Yes, she does. So the resolution. Was it in our packet? No, no. I got it this morning. Oh, something. Yeah, we, I, there were some tweets that I had to do. So here's the resolution. Um, whereas, the Bridgeport Spalding Community Schools believe that the most significant purpose of our district is to provide our students with a solid foundation for a successful life and whereas the Bridgeport Spalding Community Schools has been engaged in many initiatives to increase student achievement with areas of success but has yet to realize dramatic increases in student and teacher performance and whereas the Bridgeport Spalding Community Schools having been identified as having at least one priority school and in need of support of the MyXL statewide system of support and whereas the Bridgeport Spalding Community Schools has identified the stages for implementation, excuse me, installation of the blueprint for systemic reconfiguration and those that remain to be fully developed and whereas the Bridgeport Spalding Community Schools unanimously supports the blueprint for systemic reconfiguration and expects its full and successful implementation to ensure the maximum educational experiences and future life choices for each child who enters our classroom. Now therefore be it resolved that by the Board of Education as follows. The Board of Education of Bridgeport Spalding School directs the superintendent to ensure the urgent, appropriate, and successful installation of the blueprint. The Board of Education of the Bridgeport Schools expects its administrators to join and support the superintendent's efforts to ensure the appropriate and successful installation of the blueprint. The Board of Education and the Bridgeport Spalding Community Schools expects its teachers and other staff members to work to ensure the appropriate and successful installation of the blueprint. The Board of Education of the Bridgeport Schools encourages its students to engage in their education as fully as possible, to give their best effort in their studies, and to utilize all resources of the district that are provided to ensure their best educational outcomes and future life opportunities. The Board of Education of the Bridgeport Spalding Community Schools encourages its families and community stakeholders to support the blueprint installation as a benefit of the students we serve, the community of Bridgeport, and the future and stability of the district. The Board of Education of the Bridgeport Spalding Schools directs the superintendent to ensure that matters which distract from the core principles of the blueprint, such as student discipline matters or compliance reporting or other school district tasks, be dealt with swiftly and appropriately so that the time, resources, and energy for all staff members can be expediently returned to the instruction of tenants of the blueprint for systemic reconfiguration. And the rest is pretty standard resolved on this day, obviously. Is there a motion to adopt the blueprint resolution? So moved. So, discussion? Um, this is a very important step. There was a lot of work, time, and energy being put into this. And what we don't want to see is different board members or different superintendents saying, this is happening in this district. Come in and say, nope, we're no longer doing this scrap projects. We don't want to see that. And um, this is really, this is a resolution pretty familiar, sort of similar to what other districts have adopted. Yes, yes. In fact, it was taken uh, directly. Uh, we, it had to be tweaked to a more appropriately fit Bridgeport, but for the most part, it is very similar. Correct. Yeah. And because this is so important, this requires not just the secretary's uh, signature, or not just the board president, but, but the entire board. 
we have at least a majority here, five, and we appreciate um, your signature. I would like to say something. Having sat at this table off and on since 1992, um, I'm going to tell you part of my frustration is exactly what you just said, and that is you get a system spun up and somebody comes in and they go away. Mm -hmm. So I am anxious to see something stick for a long time. Because it's frustrating the staff, it's frustrating the board not have consistency from administration to administration, so we have my full support. Appreciate that, Bob. Any comments or questions? I think this is so important that uh, we really need to share it with the community at some point. I don't know how you do that. I think you show that through the results of our students, and that would be the best demonstration that we've done the right thing. Well, any time, and this is why I'm saying this, the community is named in this blueprint as being a part of it, then they should know that. They are also a key part of this work. In our back to school orientation, I know it will be mentioned that that's part of the plan. We'll find other ways to uh, make sure the community understand. Not to mention we have, um, you know, this is being videoed right now, and that will be shot on, that will be on YouTube. YouTube. By morning. <laughs> By <More> morning. <laughs> and we have a uh, reporter here from the report now. So, um, yeah, off to a good start. That's Making excellent. sure that the community, no, the community has to be our part. Next up is the 2017-18 high school student handbook. Thank you, Dr. Well, that, was, that would be a pretty big document to print, but I believe it was emailed to us. Mr. Goodall, you are welcome to come up and... Any change, any significant changes that you want to highlight for short hours? Uh, I don't know if there's anything that can significantly be added a couple of... Uh, so we have fractions from yeah. Class E to Dangerous Weapon. Um, we added to Class E, uh, pepper spray and mace have become a little bit more of an epidemic. So we added that, uh, named it specifically, um, theft. And we also order um, in the back for our course offerings as well. So our students and parents all will have access to our course offerings at the back of that. Um, besides that, um, simple changes that need to be tweaked a little bit. And I, and I think we changed class dues as well. Class dues as well, yes. So much for class dues. We made it so that way you could, uh, it'd actually be cheaper if you paid like up front. Because part of the problem that we have like, with our seniors and our groups coming in is that we, we end up collecting all that money at graduation, but we need that money ahead of time to pay for like prom and, and other things. So we've kind of made it cheaper if you just pay up front. Does that make sense? I think they were like 20, 20 bucks. Uh, they're, they're 25 bucks, like 20 bucks if you pay up front. So if you pay for your four, four years? Yeah, so we're saying, yeah, that's kind of our hope is if you if you can come in and you, you pay at the beginning in the fall, you pay for it, you're all done, and it'll, be, it'll, it'll save you money in the long run instead of collecting at, at the end. So what are you going to do with students who want to think and then do that retroactively? I'm, I'm sorry, Bob, I can't hear you. What about students who would want to, like, they're going to be sophomores and say, yeah, I'd like to do that retroactively? Oh, just moving forward, wherever you are from the grade. So it's like $25 for, like, each grade, and if you pay up front, it's like 20 bucks. Okay, so I'm a junior, and I've already paid my $25 three times. But nobody's done that. That's been part of, that's been part of the problem, is we, we don't have it. It's the senior year to try to collect before the that's, that's That's part of our problem, is we're trying to get the money in, in up front. I understand. Okay. So that, that might not explain it right? No, I will talk over Okay. Time, yeah. 
I'm sorry. Well, that's what we're hoping for. That's, that's, that's what we're hoping for. But we need, we need more people like that. We're trying because again, we're not, this isn't like to try to make money. We, yeah, and so we just to help alleviate the stress of the fighting. And it allows this. It allows the kids to do more for them because we end up collecting that before they graduate, and then that money goes to the. the next yes, and so. Mentioned and other things. Um, yeah, can you just talk about in general using any kind of aerosol propellant device would be subject to that infraction? I heard, I heard aerosol. I didn't hear the first part. I heard aerosol. Or aerosol propellant, okay? Because at the end of the day, you're getting real specific, and I hate to say this, but there are other things out there that students can bring in. Well, in the, in, the, in one of the trainings we went to, um, when you come up to getting into dangerous weapons, or um, for example, you talk about three and a half inch knife, or that that you put over the board for expulsion. If it's not specific, it becomes a loophole. And when that becomes a loophole, and it's not specific in the handbook, and it, it, it creates an edge for the parent or someone else coming in when they go in front of the board. So that was just one of the things that we did. We've seen that um, there is, we do have one, I believe in the class C that does say um, any, using anything to be hazardous or hurt someone. So that would fall under underneath there, but that pepper spray had become a more, I see it more and more and more and more. But I understand what you're saying with that. But you think it's covered? Yes, it is covered. Yeah, it is covered under there. Yeah. It is, yes. And it's mainly our girls. <laughs> it, it is. <laughs> it's very, it's a, yeah. With our bullying policy. Yes. And I, I know it's pretty much spelled out here, but bullying just really worries me so much. And I know kids bully one another, but when you hear kids who actually take their lives because they've been bullied. And then you hear parents say that they went to the school and they talked to the school and the school said, you know. We actually, yeah. with, our, with, with our PBIS has actually done wonders for our teachers and us. But not only that, um, Ms. Collins, who's coming, has also done a really good job of bringing back restorative justice and we've adopted a lot of those as well. And so this year, um, working with her and, and Mr. Legal, we actually brought parents in on several of our conversations with other parents and we sat down and met and that's part of the restorative justice thing and if you talk to a lot of the parents and people in in the community you'll find out that they were a part of that uh, and they got a chance to see um, really what's going on in the interaction between their children and other children um, so we are doing that um, it is it is an issue cyberbullying is an issue um, a lot of them things that are happening not on school or school related it's happening outside of that and we do much as possible to try to help them, parents, and the students with that, um, but we are still legally only, only limited to what we can do when it takes place in school and in the building. And I, and I can say this honestly, uh, Teddy, that it is, God forbid it has happened, but we haven't had an incident like that here, and again, God forbid that, that it does, but I think a lot of it has to do with the job that Mr. Rodriguez and, and the staff do in building relationships with our kids, and they know that they can, they can find people that they can trust, and, and we do, we bring in, when it's when it's brought to our attention, we do take it serious. We bring in the parents, you know, and, and again, it's like I just came back from Japan, and what is their biggest concern in the schools? Cyberbullying. You, you know, I mean, it's just it's everywhere, and, and it's it's not going to go away because it's easy to hide on the internet and say say those mean things, and it's only it's only going to get worse. And so we're a lot of the times we're we're coming in on Monday dealing with the things that happened over the weekend. You know, from Facebook and, and Snapchat and, and the ugly things that, that go on. But I think, for the most part, we, we do a pretty good job. But again, it's it's something that it's just uh, it's it's hard to always keep keep control of. It really, I mean, to be one hundred percent on top of. Have you ever seen a profile of a child who has is being bullied? How they the characteristics of how they act in the classroom? A absolutely. 
and, and we see that, and I know Mr. Becca sees that, and again, uh, it's, it's a credit to our staff and the relationships that they build, but they, and then we have time with our staff when they're talking about the students and, and constantly having those conversations, like, hey, do you, you see Tony, and, and what, what's going on? Why is this, this happening? And then, you know, again, you, you, you dig in and you find out that these are the things going on. It, it goes back to relationships, and I think that is, that is probably our, our, our really, our greatest strength that we have here in this in this building. Because when I think back to you know, in your high years, mm -hmm. I guess we all probably can think back to maybe if you were bullied. I was so intimidated in mm -hmm. my junior high years that I think I didn't even open my mouth for three years. Because <laughs> I was afraid I'd get beat up by somebody. And uh, I never even thought to tell the teacher or my parents. Right. I don't know if that's characteristic of most people. Absolutely. Right. That's and, not normal. And, our, and our hope is is that when you get to know those kids and you see the things that are abnormally and they're being abnormally quiet, that you can build those relationships and figure out what's going on. So somebody could could reach you and, and build that bridge to you so that way you would be comfortable talking with them. And that takes trust and that takes time. I did come out of it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God. Okay, is there a motion to approve the 2017-18 high school student handbook? So moved. Support. Motion to support. We've kind of already had the discussion, but anything else on the topic? <laughs> nice job, guys. Thanks. Yeah. Okay, Ron. Mrs. Morris? Yes. Mrs. Albertson? Yes. Mr. Allen? Yes. Mr. Lang? Yes. And Mr. Nelson? Yes. Okay, next up we have the consent agenda that includes the minutes from the Monday, June 12, 2017 business meeting and Monday, June 26, 2017 committee of the whole meeting and the personnel report. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? Someone. Support. Discussion. Would you please review the personnel report? I have a question. Can you do that? So, um, the personnel report includes a uh, transfer of, um, you know, um, athletic secretary, Linda Rodriguez, retired, so we need very much to replace her. And so library, HL Get Right It, um, has been interviewed and will be moving over to the high school main office to be um, com combination main office secretary and athletic secretary. Um, additional assignments include at this time, and we have some working agreements that, are they in the packets or? Mm -hmm. Packets, okay. Because, um, you know, we are we're in need of an athletic director um, for both the high school and the middle school, or either one person or a combination. So we discussed in the personnel committee um, having a, kind of um, two people, one at the high school, one at the middle school, so uh, Dave Rodriguez has agreed to take the helm of the high school. Um, assistant Athletic Director and Matt Smith, who was not here tonight, but was very committed to be the middle school Assistant Athletic Director. They both will be under the guidance of um, Principal John Legato. So Mr. Legato will be attending the TBC meeting uh, in place of the Athletic Director and making sure that the, our Mr. Smith and Mr. Rodriguez um, get all the information that they need. And I will say, even though the board has not uh, formally approved the, this um, athletic director or assistant director position, I, I've seen them at work this summer already. You know, we can't have too much of a time gap in making sure that our athletic uh, department is taken care of and they've been fulfilling those positions very well. We have um, a few resignations and retirements, and, and those are on your report. We do have several positions still to be filled at um, high school, elementary, in fact, we have them on the board. Two positions at Atkins, uh, one at the middle school, math, a, a high school, two math high school teachers, and um, uh, just today we got a resignation from one of our uh, CI teachers, uh, special ed teacher for cognitively, cognitively impaired 
students, and so we have to post for that, and we have to post for a pre-K position. We're pretty sure that we have candidates um, uh, that are willing to take the positions for at least the Atkins. Yeah, at least those two Atkins positions, and I'll bring those to you at our opportunity and meeting, which is actually the first day that school starts, but, or first day for teachers to return. So we'll have those, at least those two for Atkins. Hopefully we'll have all of them still. We do not want to start the school year with uh, substitute teachers. We, we will, we have to, but we're, the, the, the administrators are working really hard uh, interviewing to make sure that we have those in place. Any discussion or questions? <coughs> Mrs. Albertson? Yes. Mr. Allen? Yes. Mr. Lang? Yes. Mrs. Morris? Yes. And Mr. Nelson? Yes. The next is the November 7th, 2017 special election, the sinking fund resolution discussion and adoption. Was this 
that effectively communicated with staff so that they understand that this policy is in existence? So, part of the requirement is that every building must have a team of teacher staff members, not just teachers, that are trained in this. And so we've had some teachers trained, uh, and some administrators trained, and um, <coughs> I, for one, have still not been trained, but I'm going tomorrow to get um, the training, and then it will be conveyed to all of the staff as to what's allowed, what's not allowed, and this is also in your in your packet too. We have to make sure that it's real clear to all the staff and the parents too that uh, there are certain things that we will and will not do, can and cannot do, in, in order to restrain a child who, who may need a strain. I think it's always good also to share with staff uh, in regards to the use of positive uh, behavior interventions. What some of those are, that they are expected to do. So you know, we've been using the PBIS program for the last couple of years, two years, and I think that's one of the systems that we are very successful in, especially at Atkins. All the students know the expectations, the teachers know the expectations. They spend a lot of time talking to the students about uh, what's expected, um, and, and how to behave, not just in the classroom, but in the hallway, on the bus, in the lunchroom, in the bathroom. How does that transfer to high school? It's same, same work. We have PBIS here at the high school, too. It's, um, you know, if you walk into an Atkins or a Thomas White, you see posters and stuff up on the wall immediately. The high school, it's, um, it's not quite as overt, but, um, they have, on, they have on a year head start on us, um, and then we followed suit with them. And so last year we took, we really kind of took off, and so we're going to be implementing our freshmen coming in when they have orientation. We'll have uh, implementation for them that first day when they come in, and as well as we're going to have uh, implementation for our staff again, reintroducing it again, um, coming up here on the 20. Uh, anyway, with our teachers again. That's on, just, the, that's on the 30th. On the 30th. But, first day of school, we're going through all the lessons right. again. And they're all done with projector. We all have them on projector, so each one has uh, access to be able to. So if we're all going over athletic events, everybody will wear athletic events, and it'll be the same. They're getting the same thing from everybody. So so high school has PBIS also, and the, in the, there are expectations at the high I mean, they may be a little bit different, but at the high school, students are expected to behave a certain way in the hallway, in the classroom. I, and I think we've been very successful in our PBIS efforts. A number of suspensions have been reduced, a number of referrals have been reduced. We don't have teachers referring a student to the office because they don't have pencils or a piece of paper. They, you know, there's different levels of infraction. Uh, and, Teachers have been pretty respectful of that, and the kids, they, they know how to behave. Now, some of them, for whatever reason, just can't help themselves. I mean, we do have incidents, fights and stuff, but all that has been dramatically reduced because everyone knows the expectations and trying to respect, respect those expectations. Well, discipline is a big piece of the problem. Okay, is there a motion to adopt the emergency seclusion and restraint policy? So, support. Motion for support? Support. Sure. Show sure, support. Any further discussion? Mr. Allen? Yes. Mr. Lane? Yes. Mrs. Morris? Yes. Mrs. Alberson? Yes. And Mr. Allen? Yes. The next is the Back to School Fun Fest and the Backpack Giveaway. And so, John, I'm going to let you piggyback with me on this, but um, Shively Brothers, I'm sorry. No problem. Okay, right. Uh, oh, <laughs> right. <laughs> I didn't think about that. Um, Shively Brothers, which is a tool and guide company in the 
Bridgeport community is celebrating its 70th anniversary this year. And they actually contacted um, a teacher over at Atkins to ask how they could give back to the community and do it through the school district. Well, of course, all we had to do was just hook us up. And John has been our contact person uh, meeting with Shively. And they're very excited to both celebrate their 70th anniversary and give back to the community, uh, to the community and the school. So John, what should you share with them real quick? It's really been a very organic and just wonderful experience and it's, it's really been the dedication and, and caring of, of the Shively team. And it's just been one thing after another where they have added and it's, it's really grown legs and, and it's gonna be a whole carnival atmosphere and they're gonna give away uh, uh, backpacks and school supplies once they found out that uh, the one group that was doing it the last several years just uh, wasn't able to. And once they found that out, they wanted to continue the, the giving and, and the generosity. And then they tie that into their 70th uh, uh, picnic that they're having. And so uh, when you come out on the 26th, uh, you're going to see uh, almost like a mini version of Bridge Fest. Uh, but just for a couple hours and, and geared just towards kids. I mean, you, you name a kind of carnival of, uh, event and they're, they're bringing it in. And it's all free for, for us at the school. They're going to sell tickets and any of the, uh, just to like, you know, for like certain, you know, things like, because you're just not going to throw balls at me for free in the dunk tank. You know, <laughs> like if I'm going in there. It's gonna, it's gonna cost you know, you something. So, but you know, and then any of the proceeds they're gonna give back uh, to the high school, and then there's another organization that they're tied with as well. And so uh, we have teachers and students coming in, but Shively has also just been incredibly generous. Uh, you know, we have uh, uh, Mr. Kemp, who's just an unbelievable human being and teacher. You know, has compiled like a wish list for Project Lead the Way. He gave that to them, and they're sitting there going, oh, we can get you this. Oh, we got this. We can get you this. And so their generosity has just been overwhelming, and they have, they just want to give back. And so please, if you are around the 26th, from, from 2 to 5, stop out, see what they're, what they're doing and what they're doing for the families and, uh, you know, the, the kids to get them started off on the right foot here to have a good school year. Yeah, it's going to be right across from, from the high school. That's I'm saying if you're familiar with Bridge Fest, this is going to be uh, not quite Bridge Fest, but it's it's going to be uh, uh, just that kind of yeah, that kind of carnival atmosphere. And and, and again, please come in and, and uh, uh, I know Rebecca will come in and throw uh, and try to dunk me. She's already I think it's like ten bucks. She already said she she's willing to spend. And so please, you know, uh, it's it's going to be. It, it's just good. You'll see a lot of our teachers and students giving back as well along with Shively. And so it's just, it's been a lot of fun. And it's really been from the bottom of their heart. It's been, just, it's been true love for them, like wanting to give something back. And it's really been, it's like, I, I know I'm repeating myself, but it, it's been, I've been very overwhelmed and humbled by their organization, their discipline, and their generosity. And those people, we've met a lot because those people are organized. Uh, there's a reason they've been around for 70 years. It's, they are they are on top of their stuff. So, hey, it's this board of superintendent Congress. No? Thank you, everyone, for all the information you've given. I have the summer. <laughs> I know and I'm about to cry. <laughs> I'd like to thank everybody as well for all the information. I came in here kind of bummed out, didn't think I could absorb anything I did. So it had to be due to your presentations because it wasn't me. I'm looking forward to a great school year coming up. With great anticipation. Very much uh, appreciate what's been laid down this framework and look forward to follow through on the rest of the school year. I'm very excited about the possibilities and the potentials of what we have coming up, so thank you. I want to echo those, those comments. Thank you for coming in and being part of the meeting and the presentation to you should have to be. But um, the blueprint is important and it's going well. I think it's going well and I can't make it.
every meeting, but um, every time I'm there, if I miss a meeting or two, I see progress. So uh, I'm not so sure sometimes I think stepping away and not missing a meeting is kind of a benefit that I get to see the progress that's been made. And, uh, so that's good. And I think we'll have a great year. Thanks for updating the handbook and uh, taking on some additional responsibilities and schedule. Uh, the, what Shively is doing is awesome. It uh, started out as something simple and, and they've grown, as I saw a need here in Bridgeport. And they are a great company. They've been here their entire time. They've been in Bridgeport Township. Home run early is right by the wastewater treatment plant. And um, great, great company. Um, treat their employees really well. I know that for the time they worked at Power Tool. So good organization. So it's really great that they stepped up. So all of us, I'll be out there to ask the fire department to all the other guys out there. You can also be out as a board member. Great <coughs> this opportunity to talk to some of our parents. If they have questions about the village or anything else going on in the district as well. So there's something that we can put right on. Okay. So in your packet, there's a district, uh, district update. <coughs> list from me and I won't go over everything on here. I know you can read, but I do just want to highlight a few things here. If you watch WNEM TV5, you probably saw, hopefully this weekend, uh, where they've been running commercials uh, featuring interviews, pictures of, of staff and students from Report Spot and Community Schools. And um, it's a pretty nice commercial and we're really excited about it. We've also been in the line of marketing. We've been doing some, we have some yard signs in several locations. We have a couple of big portable signs up. So we're, we're um, marketing. In one way I can tell that uh, our marketing is working. Uh, I don't have all the numbers for you, but there has been a steady stream of families coming in to enroll their, their uh, children in the last couple of weeks. I, if I'm in the office, when I see parents come in, I like to connect with them, shake their hand, talk to them. I talked to three parents today. One was a parent bringing in four students, and she was so passionate about, she had to get her children out of the other situation that they were in I had to give her a big hug because she was crying and everything. I need my children in a safe, um, secure, and loving environment. I said, when you pick the right place, I'm going to give you a hug. And, uh, and uh, just real excited. Um, and I talked to another mother who was bringing three children. And she said, I've been trying to get over here for the last two weeks. And she's in. And it was just it's heartwarming to see the number of families that are choosing Bridgeport schools for whatever reason. And I'm assuring everyone that I get a chance to talk to that they have made the right choice and that we will take care of their child. We will provide that uh, nurturing environment along with the astronaut academic environment. So, really excited about that. Um, Project Leads Way, uh, Mr. Legato and Mr. Kemp have been pounding the pavement uh, to get donations to help support our Project Lead the Way lab. Now, you know, we've had Project Lead the Way for the last couple of years, but it's been not hands-on lab work. Now we're at the point where we have to uh, equip our lab, and that financially is more than a notion. And so they've been out um, uh, soliciting donations. John, you want to tell us real quick about the donation? Yeah, again, this isn't... I wouldn't say we're all, again, just like with Shiley was incredibly organic and, and, and giving, this, this really came from uh, uh, Jordan Tini and, and with Amigo, and uh, he was very incredibly active with the school. He, he runs a leadership group. Uh, he has just been uh, very inspired, I, I, I really believe, but well, I know he is, and it's really, again, due to the uh, effort he sees. Uh, when he comes in, you know, with, with, with again, guys like Mr. Becca and Mr. Rodriguez and, and what he sees in the school. And so he has been giving, and, and it's one of those things where, uh, again, Mr. Kemp came up with the, uh, the list of, of things that we need for Project Lead the Way, and, and one of them was a CNC machine. And uh, it was $15,000 for the CNC machine. And, and so 
Jordan's looking at this going, CNC machine, 15,000. Well, let me look at what machine you're looking at buying, Chance. And uh, Chance shows him, he goes, it's garbage. He goes, that's, that's not gonna, I mean, yeah, 15,000. He goes, let, let me see what I can do. And so Beth calls me up one day and uh, says, Legallo, you need, to, you need to come in. I, I got something for you. And so uh, I, I sit down, and what they have purchased and what they went out is they're going to uh, buy the best CNC machine. Because actually, and again, I, I know I'll get criticized for, for talking too much, but there's a whole story that, that, we need to, that we need to paint. So this summer, we have been going out and meeting with all these uh, different uh, people in education out at different conferences at, at SBSU where there is a shortage of machinists and there is a shortage of skilled trade and they're 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 dying for us to to produce this and so one of the things that they're short is they need people who know how to operate a real the real CNC machine and so Jordan goes out and gets this and this is about a fifty thousand dollar machine and the things that they're going to be able to do I don't Ask those guys, okay? I, 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 can, I can't even tie my shoes. So uh, let alone figure, figure these things out. So, uh, but what he has gone out and, and said and done is this is the machine. And once we took this out like to other machinists and even shy, they'd be like, that's what you guys are buying? You guys are getting that? They're like, oh man. And like, they're, I mean, they're like, you're gonna have that in your building. You're gonna have kids trained, but we'll hire them right away. We'll, we'll, you got to load those, we'll hire them right away. And, and so it's, it's a direct pipeline uh, for our, what again benefits our families and our kids and, and what Bridgeport truly is and we understand who we are. And so again, it, it's gone out and what Jordan did then, because this is a, is a machine and he, he knew the value of, of getting it. In fact, he said, he goes, I guarantee there's no other school in the country that has this. The only, the only places that, that are going to have this are like college level tech schools. And so you guys do this with Project Lead the Way and you continue to build what we're, we're hoping to build with, with uh, GMCA. And, and we're going we're gonna to build something that's certainly unique. And, and so what he's done is he went out and he did this. He contacted Merrill Technologies and Michigan Manufacturing and the Great Lakes Bay Manufacturing and PF uh, Markey. Uh, obviously, Amigo next here, uh, Endurance Carbide, Duralast Roofing, and they've all given the school, they've all given us $5,000 and towards the machine. And so, obviously, the one thing they asked too when this whole thing started, they're like, Legala, look, we need, you, we need to make sure that you have skin in the game. So, it's a $15,000 machine. If you guys, and that's what you budgeted for, if you put in five, no, it just the fact that it was a fifteen thousand dollar machine. That's what we had budgeted. You know, the fact is, if you had been budgeted for fifteen, if you put five in the game, we'll get you the, the better machine. But we want to make sure that you're into this and have skin in the game. And I'm, yes, sir. You know, and so we have five thousand dollars towards it. So again, last I knew, and they'll tell you I'm not that smart, and, and Kathy will tell you I'm not that well spoken. Last I knew, fifteen thousand, five thousand. That's ten thousand dollars cheaper. And so. We're going to save, we're going to get a machine that we can get for our kids, and it's something I think that we can have that hook and things that we can be proud of here at, at Bridgeport High School and, and, and continue to build for, for our kids. So it really is, it's a Jordan thing, and it became all these other local businesses, and again, so I'm just very excited when you see the amount of caring and giving that is out there when you talk to people and it comes off genuine and, and, and passionate people out there in our community, and they just need to be... To. So I'm, I'm really excited. So this is a next tier thing. It's all these other businesses, and we're gonna have a. Now we gotta figure out how we're gonna get this sucker in because it's uh, it's pretty big. But those are good problems to have. Yes, so we'll thank figure you. it out. Yes, we'll figure it out. Yes, we'll figure. I'm not. I wasn't gonna say no. Yeah, I wasn't gonna say no. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Have to work on that. The last thing. I'm gonna ask that when we get this thing in an operation, we have some sort of celebration. Acknowledge those folks' contribution, and I would really like for the board to be invited to make sure that they understand just how much we appreciate what they've done. There's a couple things that, that uh, <coughs> Beth and I have talked about too. On the machine itself, we want to put all the donors on the machine itself, and also in that project, Lead the Way room, Mr. Kemp and I have talked about putting 
like up there, like big gold, and you know, like, hey, these are the people, because I want our kids to come in and understand that are part of Project Lead the Way. Look, you're here because these people have given and sacrificed for you to have this opportunity. So we need to certainly be, uh, have that attitude of gratitude towards, towards you know, the, the communities and the businesses that are, that are supporting us. Now, who do we have to train in that? What's that? Who do we have Here's, it's Mr. Kemp, and again, this is what you just talked about is a huge part to this, this puzzle, this piece. We can have all this great machinery, we can put in this lab. If it's not for Mr. Kemp, we don't have this. We, we don't have this. And so when we talk about the talent management piece, you know, it's, it's a gentleman like Mr. Kemp that, that needs to get the, the respect he, he is due. And, and, and he chooses to, to want to be a part of this district. He lives in Bridgeport. The guy is just, he's here at 6 a.m. You know, he will beat Gabe and I here. Uh, and so when you, when you see Mr. Kemp and... and, and Mr. Kemp, he is our Project Lead the Way teacher. Oh, and, and so I'm sorry for, for not explaining that. He's our Project Lead the Way teacher, but he is trained on it. He is trained on it. And, and so, you know, he's just an unbelievable human being and, and guy. And, you know, don't be afraid if there's birds living in his beard. The guy is just, <laughs> he's unbelievable. So, he's a huge piece. We can't do this without him. That's great. <laughs> What are you doing next Sunday at Bob and Melinda? He's a great man to come preaching. He's a good guy right now. I got my call. Uh, a couple other things on, on the updates. Um, you all will get an invitation for, is it August 30th? For the um, 20th. No, no, 28th. The kickoff. That's the 28th. The 28th is the welcome back breakfast. Well, welcome, yeah. welcome yeah. back breakfast. Yeah. That's on the 28th. That's the first day the teachers will be. So you'll get an invitation to that uh, real soon. You will also get an invitation to our kickoff um, November Millage campaign meeting breakfast. Next, that's on the 30th? 29th. 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 Oh, 29th. The next day. And uh, so the plan is to. Um, Kick off the campaign by inviting current board members, former board members, <coughs> uh, community members, um, and invite, tell them what we're doing in terms of our, our sinking fund campaign, what we need to do, and how we could use their support and form a, a formal committee to get that going. And we will kick that off on the 29th. And so you will get um, an invitation. To that and it'll probably be not sure exactly where on the 29th. It will be the cafeteria for being the uh, uh, library. We want to invite elected officials, including our center. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes. Vanessa, Ken, uh, Ken Horn, if you can think of any, and we have, we're going to invite several community members. Those who think, those who we think would be interested in willing to support us one way or another. Speaking of uh, Senator Ken Horn, he is, um, Senator Horn is securing uh, funding to uh, put reading tutors from the Reading Corps, Michigan Reading Corps, in two buildings in Saginaw County, and he has chosen Atkins uh, Elementary to be one of the buildings um, that will be getting these two reading tutors. And these tutors will be with us for a minimum of two years. And we'll work under the, uh, under the direction of the new um, K-3 literacy coach that will be coming through the ISD. So we're really excited about, uh, so this will be a new partner, uh, an additional partner for us. And um, I, I think we could use that extra support for our students, especially since we have the new third grade reading initiative, doing everything that we can to support our students to make sure that they're successful academically in the area of uh, reading. Um, you have calendars in your packet, and the calendar is pretty standard. Uh, one big difference of the calendar, in order to support the academic uh, professional development for our teachers, we are will be implementing beginning 
on October 11th, Late Start Wednesday. And so on uh, those Wednesday, every Wednesday during the school year, beginning October 11th, our teachers, the students will be coming late, the teachers will be re reporting us during the, uh, the regular time, and every building will be engaging. We will have a rotating schedule of either professional learning communities, TLC, uh, some kind of professional development or a staff meeting and the reason for that is to, you know, we do those things usually after school. Um, we do not always get 100% participation. As part of our putting our systems in place, we want to make sure that every teacher can take advantage of the PLC support that we will be um, providing, well, actually they do the work in the professional learning community. We don't, it's not a sitting hit. They work together uh, on ways to improve academic achievement and then professional development. Um, and we're waiting until October 11th to make sure that we have ample time to let our families know that um, the schedule will be, will be different on Wednesday in October 11th. Um, just one other thing, um, although we will not be, uh, Bridgefest is no longer in existence, the, ha the Haunted Elementary is still alive and well, and uh, we just signed a one-year building use permit for them to use the um, Schleffier property, doing pretty much what they've been doing in the past, to do the Haunted Elementary, and they'll be paying a monthly fee, pretty lucrative. Haunted houses apparently are pretty big, they're big business from what I've been told. And they want to continue that in our community and they were willing to make a commitment, sign an agreement, at least for a year. And then after a year, it will, will be considered and um, make it a little bit more formal. So we've got the all the insurance in place. Those are the from the disposal of the building that they ran off the Oh, absolutely not. Right. Our building, yes. We're satisfied with the insurance. Yes, we're back to the We looked at that agreement. We know that um, they met with the fire chief to make sure that they were. How'd that go? Make sure that they were up to code in terms of evacuation plans and fire safety and all. So we're, we're pretty happy about that involvement in the community. And just the last thing on the 22nd, we will have a former Bridgeport High School student, Bridgeport grad, uh, Aramis Danielle Ayala, who is the Florida State Attorney. I always say, I will always put it, the Attorney General is, is comfortable with the Attorney General. Um, some of you might know the Danielle family, and she will be She's coming back to the area that we can speak at the NAACP banquet, but she'll be coming on that Friday, September 22nd, to speak to the Fort High School students. And we're very proud and excited to be able to host Erin and happy that she is clearing her schedule with her family on that day to visit her alma mater. She has gotten very famous. Yes, she has gotten yeah. very famous. All you have to do is move on her name. Now, that's all that I have, and of course, um, thank you very much, uh, board, for um, uh, supporting and approving this uh, blueprint. We're very excited about continuing the work, and I'm very happy that uh, uh, once I'm no longer superintendent, um, that the work will continue. Thank you very much to the ISD for um, your information. I, we are always so appreciative of all the support that the ISD provides and, and we know that we'll continue to, to provide. And um, well, Fred needs all of this. Oh, everybody's signature. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. okay. And thank you to everyone else who took their time out of this hot summer day <coughs> to come sit with us. Our board meeting, and I think that's all. And of course, if you have any questions, concerns, you know how to reach me.